Information has just been received of the advance of the German army. They are expected in Paris in the next 24 hours. Premier Renault said the situation was serious, but not hopeless, and urged all citizens to remain calm. Monsieur Jakobowski, what happened? I, I missed the plane by this much. The, the approximate size of a visa stamp. You can have your room back, of course. Thank you. The hotel is practically empty. But it's much too dangerous for you to remain in Paris. I know, I know. Tomorrow I will leave for the South. You know why I like you, Monsieur Jakubowski? Because I prefer a sunny day to a cloudy day. Uh, perhaps you would care for a chocolate. Why is it that the best husbands are always unmarried? You ought to settle down, Monsieur Jakubowski. I mean, get married. No. Why not? Well, you see, Madame Bouvier, I am a great admirer of beauty. But with the ladies, I have been somewhat less than a dazzling success. This has made me rather timid. But in many ways, it, it has its compensations. I, it has given me a great deal of time for reading and improving my mind. <laughs> Chocolate, mademoiselle? Madame? How can you be so cheerful at a time like this? You forget. I am used to being a refugee. In the technique of flight, you might say I am a virtuoso. The situation isn't quite the same for you as it is for us. France isn't your country. I wish it were. I've spent most of my life trying to become a citizen of some country. For over 500 years, our family has lived in Amiens. Now the Germans are there. And soon they will be in Paris. I can't believe it. It's always hard to believe at first. My earliest recollections, Poland. Shots, screams in the night. My poor mother took her candlesticks and her pillows, her most cherished possessions, and fled to Berlin. And there, there I grew up. Oh, I was quite happy there. I, I was successful in business. I, I was a citizen, a patriot. I belong. But a certain house painter had different ideas. So I packed my belongings in five trunks and I fled to Vienna, the city of waltzes. <laughs> but the waltz soon changed into a goose step. I packed my belongings in two trunks and fled to Prague. But the German army seemed to take absolute delight in following me. Once again, I fled. 
This time with no trunks, and I came to Paris, the city of light. Now the lights are going out, so I embark on migration number five. In 1918, Paris was saved at the last moment. Maybe another miracle will happen. I don't know anything about miracles, but my mother, wise woman that she was, used to say, no matter what happened in life, there are always two possibilities. I'm Dr. Ziggy of the Polish Embassy. I must see Colonel Pokoshny at once. Room 209. Thank you. Sergeyevich, huh? wake up. Oh, Dr. Ziki. I must see the Colonel. Oh, no. Colonel, not alone. And when Colonel not alone, he wants strictly to be alone. But I have urgent business with him. Please, no. No, as Colonel's orderly, only I can disturb Colonel. Please. Excuse me, Colonel, but I... See, I told you. Colonel does not like to be interrupted in the middle of campaign. Oh, my poor darling. This awful war. It is not war that is awful. It's being out of it that is disgusting. Can't I make you forget the war? Just for a little while. There's only one woman who can make me forget. She is written in my heart. To her, I shall always be faithful. <laughs> Beginning when? To the end of time. Mm, I adore you. And I don't care if you don't love me. Who says I do not love you? But you just told me that your heart is given away. Sweet child, you understand so little. It is only because I love you that I tell you the truth. Savoyevitz, my boots! It is imperative that I speak to you at once. Imperative? What makes imperative? I'm just about to start for the embassy. The embassy has been evacuated. Run along, my dear. Here are the papers. Is that everything? Everything. The code, a full list of names and addresses of our men in Warsaw. Our government in London is waiting for it. I will deliver it. Four days from now, a British submarine will pick you up off St. John de Luz. It will take you to England. You must be there on the 16th. Don't worry, doctor. I, Tadeusz Boleslav Count Prokozny, will get to England even if I have to swim. Do you have transportation for me? I have engaged a taxi. It's waiting outside. Imbeciles! Why don't you attack the Germans? They said the government will pay. Where is the government, eh? This must be the last taxi in Paris. It was. I'm ruined. I was promised 10,000 francs to drive a gentleman out of Paris tomorrow. That's too bad. Yes, sir. Excuse me? Please. I, uh, I will give you 10,000 for it. For this? Yes, I, I would like it only as a souvenir. 10,000 francs? And one more. Surely the Polish embassy has automobiles. 
instruct them to send one. I will go immediately to the embassy. But I fear the consul has taken all four automobiles with him. Why does that pig need four automobiles? Evidently, a man who signs papers is more important than one who is ready to die for Poland. All back. So now, child, get me vehicle. Yes, sir, ve vehicle. Get me automobile. Get me plane. Uh, get me motorcycle. Get me donkey. But get me. Yes, sir. Uh, pardon me, uh, Colonel. May I make a suggestion? I tell you, Monsieur, uh, Monsieur uh, Jakubowski. S. L. Jakubowski. I thought so. My suggestion is that you mind your own business. But strangely enough, we're in the same business. The business of escaping. This fellow gets on my nerves. Yeah. First thing in the morning, Zabonievitz, I want waiting here vehicle. You will see to it, Doctor. Double vodka, please. Cosette! Never oh, here when I need her. Cosette! Double vodka for Monsieur. Our guests have a right to some service. I want to go with you. I'll make you forget the other girl. Impossible. She's waiting for me. Where? Here? In Paris? In Reims. I promised I'd come back for her. Good evening, Cosette. Good evening. Since this is my last night in Paris, I will start with the onion soup. Oh, are you leaving us too? Yes, I'm afraid so. I'm going to try to reach the Spanish border. Oh. Uh, Cosette. Yes? Please. Suppose you were traveling from Paris to uh, Andai. What would be the best way to go? Oh, I would take the road south to Orléans. Uh huh. Orléans. 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 Ah, Orléans. After that, what course would you suggest? After the soup, the chicken a la casserole. No, no, thank you, Cosette. You see, the Colonel and I have a problem, and I must concentrate on it. Cosette, will you explain to Monsieur Grabowski? He has a problem. I have no problem. The problem of transportation. Explain. My orderly takes care of transportation. You might explain to the Colonel that his orderly may encounter some difficulty. But together we can arrange... Uh, Cosette, will you ask Monsieur Grabowski why he says we? Where is we? I am Tadeusz Boleslav Prokosny. S.L. Jakubowski. Delighted. Don't you remember us? Us? Who is us? The Jakubowskis from Horedenka. Uh, you see, the Colonel and I come from the same village in Poland, you know. Really? Oh, yes. Uh, it is true. I come from Horodenka. It is one of my father's villages. Who inhabits these villages, I do not know. Our rent collector knows. It's a geographical accident. No significance. Still, when one travels together, it's more pleasant than when one... When I travel, I travel alone. When I travel with company, it's company that I chose. Tell him that. Yes. Let me explain why I choose him. You see, the colonel is a strong man. 
He's a chivalrous man. He's a military man. And a military man can requisition an automobile. Now he has every right to know why he chooses me. Well, if, if I say so myself, I, I am a resourceful man. Perhaps I can find an automobile for the Colonel to requisition. You see, strength plus resourcefulness. Isn't that a wonderful combination for an emergency like this? Hmm? He and I do not speak the same language. Fortunately, we have a charming interpreter. Hear me, Monsieur Leibovitz. You're a clever man. You know what I mean. Please do not force me to bring it into the open. But take my word for it. Any association between us is simply not possible. There is no such thing as not possible. My mother used to say there are always two possibilities. I disagree with your mother. For a true man, there's only one possibility. That's not enough. With one possibility, I cannot maneuver. I repeat, for a man of honor, one possibility. If that were true, uh, I'd have died. Oh, I don't know how many times. Now you put your finger on the issue between us. I do not fear death. Honorable death, I welcome. For me, that is the one possibility. Honorable death. What about an honorable life? Isn't that the possibility, too? Listen, Leibovitz. Even if you were Baron Rothschild himself and were sitting out there in his Rolls Royce, I would not go with you. Good night, sir. Ah. Madame Bouffier. Yes? The Baron Rothschild, do you happen to know his address? S.L. Yakubovsky. I am a relative of the Baron. Distant, but still a relative. The Baron has left Paris. Actually, it's not the Baron I want to see. I would like to talk to his chauffeur. You're talking to him. How do you do? How do you do? I have a strong family feeling. I am quite willing to take one of the Baron's automobiles off his hands. Have you any proof of your relationship to the Baron? Certainly. Monsieur? In all Paris, no vehicles. Dr. Zicky has tried everything. Impossible to get automobile. Ah. Thank you very much. Uh, just a moment. Are you quite sure you cannot drive me to Andai? I will pay you very well. I'm sorry, monsieur, but I have two more automobiles to sell this afternoon. Ah, uh, you must go at once. Thank you, madame. It just came over the radio. The Germans are already in Reims. You must go at once. That is my intention, my dear madame Bouffier. First, I must find a driver. Oh. Leibovitz! Ah, you see, there are always two possibilities. I apologize. I'm taking your advice. I'm delighted. You are welcome. You advised me to requisition an automobile. In the service of my country, I requisition this automobile. But, Colonel, why do you have to requisition this automobile when we already have it? How much did you pay for it? 50,000 francs. Make out compensation order, 60,000 francs. But, Colonel, I, I have no wish to make a profit. Take out what belongs to him, put in what belongs to us. Yes, sir. 
Perhaps I did not make myself clear, Colonel. I... I bought this automobile for... for us. You insist in using this intimate pronoun, us? I am on a military mission. I have every reason to wish it success. I won't interfere, I assure you. He refuses to understand. I understand perfectly. The Colonel does not like Jews. He cannot help that. That's the way he was brought up. I am Jewish. I cannot help that. That's the way I was brought up. But what has that to do with our escaping together in this automobile? Evidently, you do not mind to travel with somebody like me. You're very tolerant. I can't afford not to be tolerant. I can. Oh, be careful with my vodka. Yes, sir. Oh, but, Colonel, you can't leave Mr. Yakubovsky stranded here. Not my problem. Sabonievich, you have compensation order? Yes, sir. How will you get across the border without an automobile, without a visa? My dear Madame Bouffier, when you take one of these, you can cross any border without an automobile, without a visa. When we've won the war, the Polish government will honor this in Warsaw. It will go into my estate. Au revoir, mon colonel. Dearest Cosette, in the cathedral of my heart, a candle will always burn for you. Monsieur, you charge me 60,000 francs for an automobile that doesn't move. It doesn't move because, look, there's no gasoline. No gasoline? No gasoline. Then why did you sell me this automobile when you have no gasoline? Ah, uh, no. In the first place, I did not sell you this automobile. You confiscated it. In the second place, who says I have no gasoline? You have gasoline? Must have gasoline, must have Yakubovsky. Less and less, I like this Yakubovsky. This automobile is a fake! Perhaps if you release the handbrake. The colonel is an experienced motorist. I'm a cavalry man. Modern cavalry is generally motorized. In Poland, no. It's amazing. I heard that all the roads leading south from Paris were absolutely crowded with refugees. But look, look at this. La 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 Very annoying. La 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 la
Corporal, could you arrange for me to speak to the colonel, please? Colonel singing, colonel singing, does not wish conversing. But he has made it. There has been a terrible mistake. We should be heading south toward Orleans. Instead, we are heading north toward Rance. Colonel has business in Rance. Business? But that's where the Germans are. Colonel not afraid of Germans. But don't you understand? The submarine is waiting for him in the opposite direction. Less and less I like this Yakubovsky. You see, I'm irritated. Sorry, sister. Are you all right? Hurry, sister. <laughs> uh, excuse me, sister. You are going south, aren't you? Well, of course. The Germans are only 50 kilometers from here. Sabanevich, tell me something. Is he crazy or am I crazy? We go first to pick up a lady. Lady? What kind of lady? Lady Love. At a time like this? For Colonel, any time good for romance. Darling. It's too bad. I wish I were. With the least encouragement I could be. Meantime, I am Major von Bergen. And extremely hungry. The restaurant is closed. Then I suggest you reopen. Our troops will soon be here as occupying forces, and I assure you that the officers, at least, like myself, have a deep appreciation of French cooking. It would be to your advantage to entertain them. Won't you invite me in? Ah, yes, just as he described it, exactly. Who? My father, he had several meals here when he visited France in the First World War. The way he described the cooking was enough to make my mouth water. If you Germans didn't devote yourself so exclusively to fighting, you could come as civilians and enjoy what we have to offer. I should prefer that myself, but with us, militarism is a way of life. We keep on fighting even when we know that we are going to lose. Well, you have almost won this time. But, my dear, we always almost win. I tell you what, as soon as you have lost this war, come back and I'll give you a gala dinner. I'm afraid I can't wait that long. Why don't you bring some wine? And then we can discuss the rest of the menu. This is too much. Using our last drop of precious gasoline and why? To get behind the German lines. The Polish government will pay you for your gasoline. Savonievich, child, write down everything we owe the tradesmen. In my head is written. Write down also in your head that the Polish government owes me for one heart in very weak condition. One wrecked nervous system, and if the Germans catch me, 
One entire Yakubovsky. Please need help. What do you think will happen to you if we fall into German hands? I do not think, I act. Gun, I shoot. Woman, I love. Honor, I defend. <clears throat> I figure from the Middle Ages, as sure as the world is round. Who says that? Who says what? That the world is round. I don't insist. There is no doubt, Colonel, that you have one of the finest minds of the 12th century. Unfortunately, I live in the 20th. Smells heavenly. Not in the least like my mother's cooking. You seem nervous. Do you expect Darling will come in on us? He has nothing to be jealous of for the moment. My husband is not jealous. Husband? Is he so sure of you? Yes, and with reason. Your husband. French? No. Polish. How quaint. I did not know there were any Poles left. He must be the last one. He's among the first. Well, we took Poland away from the Poles. It might be amusing to take you away from this Pole. It would not, Major, I assure you, be the least bit amusing. Your resistance might be amusing. Right, Captain. Divisional headquarters moving immediately, sir. General Schlosser will hold conference within the hour. That leaves us very little time. And you are worth a little time. Ah, well, the efficiency of our army takes all the joy out of life. Imagine giving you up for General Schlosser. He's a fantastically ugly man. Ah, well. Wasn't it an American who said, war is hell? Those were Germans, Colonel. So? I don't understand you. You seem to look down on the instinct of self-preservation. Maybe you don't want to live, but I do. In your case, this ambition is trivial. We are here. You must be asleep. Savonievich's child, my balalaika. We make her sweet, yes, sir. This moment for a recital? Oh, my Rosmarinia, Rosmeseu, Na casa zepsenia, Neokameu, Jestem tak daleko, En zaszot morszego. It's a dream, I dream. It's a dream. I, the only son of Ribi Yakubovsky, lost far from home, headed for destruction with Don Quixote and Sancho Panza and Rothschild's Rolls Royce. It's a dream. It's a dream. Yes, and Dakta Leko and Zashot Monzeko Smokak Manjore. I have returned! Dad, yes! In the cathedral of my heart, a candle was always burning for you. That must be the best lit cathedral in Europe. Yakubovsky, fill tank with gasoline. And just where do you suggest I get it? Gasoline is in your blood. Get gasoline. Fill tank. That's very easy for him to say, get gasoline, fill tank. Where am I going to get gasoline? We're miles from nowhere and surrounded on all sides by the German army. 
To get gasoline, he says. Yes, but Colonel's in bigger danger than you. That's debatable. Sure, Germans have put price on his head. At the rate we're going, they'll collect it. When Colonel escaped from prison camp in Poland, Germans offered 100,000 marks for his capture. And 100,000 marks... Shh. What? What? What is that? Sounds like tank. Tank? Is tank. Is tank. Please, have never... Is tank, yes? Is French tank. Hey! Move that automobile out of our way! I would be happy to oblige, Lieutenant. But unfor unfortunately, we are out of gasoline. Sato, push it off the road. Oh, why go to all that trouble? If you could just supply us with a little gasoline, we will... Don't you realize we are in the middle of a war? Yes, yes, I realize that. But in wartime, shortages develop. We are a little short of gasoline. Sato, you heard my order. Well, wait just a moment, please. I have to get the bag. It's very valuable. This I cannot lose because... Uh, uh, I didn't want to lose this. It's very valuable. I have genuine imported Polish vodka. Vodka? Have you been faithful to me? Have you been faithful to me? How can you ask a thing like this? If I didn't love you, would I have come back for you? When all the others lived, I stayed behind because I knew you would come. Since that week we had together in Paris, I've been lonely for you. And there were no other women? Especially when I'm with other women, I feel lonely for you. And is that all you did when you were with them? Think about me? To every woman I am polite. <laughs> I do not say this to be funny. I know you don't. That's why it is funny. <laughs> mm. Oh, you're adorable and funny. I love you, darling. There is no man left in this bleak, awful, modern world like you. <laughs> he says I'm from the 12th century. Who? This fellow who is with me. Who is he? Nobody. My beloved. My eyes, <laughs> my skin, my hair. My... Yes? Uh, oh, uh, excuse me, Colonel, and Mademoiselle. I don't like to interrupt, but we are ready to leave. Do you have gasoline? Naturally. How did you manage to get gasoline? Well, for centuries, alchemists have been trying to turn lead into gold. I have done a little better. I have turned vodka into gasoline. You gave away my vodka? Please, Colonel, you must be philosophical about this. Without gasoline, an automobile cannot run. But a man can run without vodka. Uh, wait outside. We come down in an hour. Please, dear lady, explain to the Colonel. An hour may be too late. I was just told the Germans have started pouring into Rance in force. He lives in fear of death, this man. I know I'm a superfluous man. But even a superfluous man wants to go on being superfluous. Your friend is funny. He's not my friend. He's an accident. I am Suzanne Roilet. Enchanted, mademoiselle. Actually, it, it is more important for the Colonel to get away than for me, because of his secret mission. Who told you about my mission? You did. He eavesdrops! Your Colonel is a peculiar man. When he shouts in my ear, he says I eavesdrop. My Colonel is very lovable, but he's a little mad. Sing for your mistress. Sing. Does he sing? Oh, yes. 
I feel Aristide is in good hands with you. I shall dedicate myself to him and to you. Thank you, monsieur. Sing. Do you have any other pets? Only the colonel. To him, I'm already dedicated. Less and less, I like this Yakubovsky. Less and less. Why so quiet, darling? Driving all day along dusty roads makes my throat dry. Please, Colonel, forget the vodka. We should just be happy that we are together and, and traveling in the right direction. Do you imply that yesterday, when we were on our way to Mademoiselle Suzanne, we were driving in the wrong direction? Geographically, it was wrong. Emotionally, it was right. That is nice. What's the best way to get to Saint-Jean-de-Luz? Oh, Saint-Jean-de-Luz? Better go by way of Limoges and Perigueux, or you'll meet the German army. Did they already get this far? They are advancing south along the coast. Now that Paris has fallen, the war will soon be over. And it won't be very healthy for anybody caught traveling with the Polish officer. Uh, Colonel, uh, may I speak to you about something? What is it? Well, uh, don't you think we should take some precautions? What precautions? Uh, your uniform. You don't like my uniform? Oh, on the contrary, I think it's beautiful, but with the Germans all around... Oh, in terror of your skin! I'm attached to it. Besides, Mademoiselle skin, surely that is worth saving. Mademoiselle skin is no concern of yours. He's right, you know, darling. Ah, he's always right. Now don't be silly. Oh, now I'm silly! Oh, this is a new development! Obviously, you sympathize with Yakubovsky. So ride with Yakubovsky. Delighted. Good morning. Good morning, Monsieur Yakubovsky. How would you like to have a mushroom omelette and apple fritters for breakfast? A mushroom omelette? Apple fritters? How did you manage? Oh, it was very simple, really. I, uh, I picked the mushrooms at dawn. A cooperative hen has just supplied the egg, and the milk should be here any moment now. Sabonevich! <laughs> I'm ready. She is not ready. Monsieur Yakubovsky, you are wonderful. What is it? Uh. Uh. 
Oh, good morning, Colonel. Uh, uh, Susanna, I'm sorry. I lose my temper yesterday. It was for you too, Yakubovsky. Don't mention it. Oh, we're going to start the engine in the automobile for a few minutes. And as soon as the water boils in the radiator, we'll have our coffee. I'm glad you admitted you were wrong. Wrong? Who said I was wrong? Well, I was wrong. He is the most amazing man, Monsieur Yakubovsky. Last night, he told me he has been an art dealer, a head waiter, an usher in a movie theater. Oh, you wouldn't believe some of the things he has done in order to survive. I believe it. But I'm not sure it was worth the effort. <laughs> After six, I wonder what happened to Monsieur Yakubovsky. Obviously, Yakubovsky's ingenuity has failed him this time. Not even he can find us a place to sleep tonight. But I do not care. It's wonderful at last to be alone with you. <laughs> you mean without Monsieur Yakubovsky? You miss him? Monsieur Yakubovsky amuses me. He makes me laugh. Hmm? Why is it when you mention his name, I feel a stab? Here. I tell you why, dearest. Because you are jealous. Hmm. Fine situation I have reached. I, Tadeusz Boleslav Count Prokozhny, am jealous of S.L. Yakubovsky. But it's so silly. I don't think of Monsieur Yakubovsky that way at all. I'm touched by him. He's so anxious for people to love him. He wants the whole world to love him. In this ambition, he will fail. He knows that. That is what makes him so touching. I have an idea. Let's make a firm rule not to mention his name. All right. After all, before we met him, we had a lot to talk about. What did we talk about? I don't remember. Actually, I don't think we did much talking. <laughs> he loves you, this Yakubovsky. I thought we were not going to mention his name. Hmm. Perhaps he does. A little bit. I think it will be necessary to kill this Yakubovsky. Well, where do we sleep? No place to sleep, nothing to eat. But I bring news. What sort of news? Marshal Petain has taken over the government. He's negotiating for armistice and... Uh... Oh, almost forgot. The Germans will occupy north of France and the whole coastline. Where did you hear this? I don't hear it. Yakubovsky hears it. Where is Monsieur Yakubovsky? I don't know. I lost him. Well done, Corporal. For 35 years, I've been custodian of this castle, as was my father before me. But nowadays, we don't get many visitors. This is the only room that survived from the original castle. The night before the Battle of Castillon in 1453, King Charles VII slept in this very bed. Did he have a good night? No, he was too nervous. This is the Queen's bedroom. Strong. There is no one in the world who knows what I know about this castle. 
thirteenth to the eighteenth centuries. And uh, after that, did you lose interest? Nothing that happened since is of any importance whatever. The glory of France died with the monarchy. Suppose I were to tell you that the glory of France is about to be restored and that you may play a very important role in it. I, monsieur? Yes. Are you a man who can keep a confidence? There are things I know about Henry III I've never told anyone. Not even my wife. Well then, monsieur, I am not a simple tourist. I am in the service of a very important personage who may soon be honoring this chateau with his presence. But this is a castle. Surely Monsieur Yakubovsky didn't mean this. That's what he said in the note he sent us. Dead. But they are waiting for us. We are deeply honored, sir. Don't worry. Your secret is safe with us. My husband awaits you within to show you to your rooms. Frack, take the automobile round to the back and unload the luggage. Welcome to the castle, monsieur. Too bad your equerry gave us such short notice, but we will do our poor best to make you and your entourage comfortable. Where is our equerry? He's in the kitchen. He insisted. He says that no one else is allowed to prepare your meals. I'm putting Mademoiselle in the Queen's bedroom. Monsieur, naturally, will have the King's bedroom. I've never seen you looking so magnificent. I have not worn this uniform since Marshal Pilsudski marched into Warsaw in 1926. And it still fits you. You haven't put on an ounce. Suzanne, when the war ends, this is how I receive you in our ancestral home in Horodenka. I just can't believe it. An hour ago, I was ready to sleep in the marketplace. And here I am, in the royal bedchamber. This is how you deserve to be treated, like a princess. I am not a princess. I'm an innkeeper's daughter. You may feel at home here, but I'm not used to such luxury. All I can think of is how much everything must have cost. <laughs> a beautiful woman should be surrounded by beautiful things. The cost is immaterial. Darling, you are incurably romantic. Come in. Mademoiselle, sir, dinner is served. Fill the fish with horseradish sauce. 
compliments of Monsieur Yakubovsky. Mm, delicious. You must try this fish, Tadius. Wait till you hear what he told about you. <laughs> Why you are here in this castle. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Why do you walk backwards? Everybody around here walks backwards. <laughs> Compliments of my mother, Rivi Yakubovsky. This was her own recipe. Borscht and sour cream. May she rest in peace. What did you tell these people about me? <laughs> Sabonievich dismissed. I reduce you to private. Yes, sir. What lie did you tell this Monsieur Girardin? A big one, I'm afraid. Wait till you taste this borscht. Oh, my mother, God rest her soul, was a wonderful cook. Out of nothing, she could make absolutely something. So can you. You do it all the time. Tadius, you promised me to be nice to Monsieur Yakubovsky. I am not nice to you, Monsieur Yakubovsky. You are charming. Believe me, he is charming. What did you tell him? I told him the Petain government had decided to, uh, uh, to re-establish the monarchy and that you were the pretender to the throne of France, traveling incognito on your way to be crowned. <laughs> Me? King of France? Unoccupied France. In wartime, people will believe any rumor, and this, this appealed to his royalist sympathies. Monsieur Yakubovsky, you are a genius. Genius? He does it all with lies, trickery. I don't care how you did it. I love you for it. And so should you. You must admit you are enjoying yourself. So... It comes out. You love him. All right. Yes. Colonel, what Mademoiselle is saying is not what she really means. Uh, what she really means is that she loves the fish, really. And uh, she loves the borscht. That's what she really means. For a man of honor, this situation is impossible. The situation is fine. What's wrong with it? It's you who are impossible. And I'm tired of hearing about your honor. to drive the automobile. Tadius is right. You are practical, Monsieur Yakubovsky. Practical, yes. If I were not practical, I would have long since joined my sainted parents. Please, don't be practical. Not this one night. One evening in this awful time, and he had to spoil it. Please, don't let him. But, mademoiselle... Suzanne, the... what's your first name? Samuel. To you, Monsieur Samuel, and to this evening. You know something? I believe you are afraid to be alone with me. Yes, that too. How very amusing. It's not exactly amusing, it's uncomfortable. But why? That question I do not have to answer because you're a clever woman and you know why. Monsieur Samuel, you are in love with me. How very nice. It would have been nicer if I hadn't met you through the colonel. Uh, please excuse me. Monsieur Samuel, I think you are a Puritan. My father was very orthodox. They are the worst Puritans in the world. Besides, I, I'm feeling very sorry for your colonel. That's a odd thing for you to say. No, not really. He sees us together, laughing and talking.
talking, sharing a sympathy and understanding he knows he, he cannot share. And uh, I, I'm very angry with myself for having let this happen. But since it has happened, why not face it? I have, in my mind. Oh, you have? Yes. Well? There are two possibilities. Even with us? Especially with us. What are they? Either you really like me, Colonel or no Colonel, or you like me only for the moment because you are angry with him. If you like me only for the moment, that is good. Why? Because I have the sense to see it and would not take advantage of you. But darling, Monsieur Samuel, supposing I really like you, deeply like you, Canel or no Canel. That is bad. You are a funny one. Do you like to dance? I used to love it, but lately there have been no opportunities. Right this minute, dear, funny, adorable Monsieur Samuel Yakubovsky, there is an opportunity. It's a dream. I, the only son of Riva Yakubovsky, am dancing in one of the most beautiful castles of France with the loveliest daughter of France. But if it is a dream, I hope I never wake up. Yakubovsky! I challenge you! To what? Duel! I'm out of practice. I ask Mr. Yakubovsky to dance with me. If you want to challenge anybody, challenge me. Monsieur! What weapons do you prefer? No preference. I dislike them all. Oh, Tadius, you're mad. You don't know how devoted Monsieur Yakubovsky is to... Give your choice. Pistols or swords. What do you like? I haven't a thing on me. You're drunk. <laughs> Stop being afraid and fight! Afraid? I'm not afraid of you. It's you who are afraid of me. I will say in your presence what I wouldn't dare say in your absence. I love her. Do you hear? I love her. Then fight for your love. Why not? Bogart! Hey!
Other men, they can outdrink, outfight. You would neither drink nor fight. Here, yeah, maybe this will give you some Dutch courage. Oh, yeah. Good. Good? Superb! Mm. 1792. Brandy of Napoleon. You know, Colonel, I'm beginning to understand why you drink. It... it solves everything. <laughs> drink the... very important. Aufmachen! Sofort aufmachen! the custodian of this castle? Yes, General. It is requisitioned by the German army. You will prepare accommodations for me and my officers. I will also need some place to billet my men. March now! Good. And his uniforms. I hid them in a chimney. Uh -huh. Here. I found that in his pocket. Ah. Pierre Michel, Stone Quarry, Saint Jean de Luz. Turn left off the Cornish Road after crossing the Nivelle. Can you remember that? Pierre Michel, Stone Quarry, Saint Jean de Luz. Yes. Good. I will destroy this. Pierre Michel, Stone Quarry, Saint Jean de Luz. darling, that this is the first time I've ever seen you without a uniform? I must say you look very distinguished. There is a time for advance and a time for retreat. This is the uniform of retreat. I know I've worn it all my life. How far are we from Saint-Jean-de-Luz? Only about 30 kilometers. But I'm afraid we're almost out of gasoline. Sie versuchten die Truppenbewegung zu stören.
virtuous proprietress of the best restaurant in France. This is an unexpected pleasure. Uh, sir, my companions had nothing to do with the accident. It was my fault. Who are you? My name is Jakubowski. S. L. Jakubowski. From? From Poland. Where in Poland? Oh, it's, it's a small village. Uh, I, I don't believe you would know it. It's called Horodenka. Horodenka? Horodenka, that rings a bell. Horodenka. I think we are interested in somebody from Horodenka. Not me, I hope. That is highly unlikely. Horodenka was the place, but the name, what was the name? Does the name Prakoshny mean anything to you? I beg your pardon? Uh, what did you say the name was? Prakoshny! Colonel Tadeus Boleslav Prakoshny. That's quite a formidable name in Borodenka. You know him? Now, how would I know Colonel Prakoshny? I do not ask how you would know, I ask do you know? But, Major. The Perkoznys belong to the highest aristocracy. And you know they are not exactly sympathetic to my people. And I see their point. Did you not say that you had a Polish husband? Which one of these specimens is it? Odd taste. Evidently, you share the prejudice of your leaders. Not particularly. I had a weakness for Jewish girls until it became unfashionable. What is your name? Answer when I speak to you! Uh, please, please, Major, you must forgive him. He's suffering from shock. He was at the bombing of Warsaw. What are you doing with him? He is my cousin. Also from Horodenka? Also from Horodenka, yes. You know, there's something to this theory of racial inferiority. In my country, a fellow like this would not be at large. Are you also incapable of speech? Who, me? No, I speak good. What is your name? Isaac Jakubowski, another cousin. You swim in Jakubowski's. Well, Fable! Ah, uh, well. There's no accounting for tastes. Madame, you are a very attractive woman. It is a frightful waste. Unluckily for you, you always catch me at a busy moment. Otherwise, I would show you what a waste it is. You will all be photographed and fingerprinted. Abführen. Finger abdrücke und Foto. Major von Bergen, you are a cultivated man. You are a humorous man, and you are not a fanatic. Well? Wouldn't it amuse you, for my sake, to make it possible for us to get to the border? Why should I do anything for your sake? You are always either waiting for your husband, or worse, you are with him. Why should I help you? Because, Major, in life there are two possibilities. And what are they? Well, you may win the war, but you may lose the war. Naturally, there are always these two possibilities in any war. Well, if you win, what harm will it do to you to let us escape? If we are caught, I'll never be able to give you that dinner I promised you. And if we lose, what? Then you have three Jakubowskis to testify that you saved their lives. That may come in handy. I've told you. The Jakubowskis of this world are no concern of mine. You are free to go, all of you. Well, there is only one problem. We are short of gasoline. Gasoline? 
You know, such chutzpah you must have learned only from your Yakubovsky. What? Chutzpah. It is an expression I learned from one of my non-Aryan girlfriends. It means effrontery to the nth degree. Then you can't help us? Not with gasoline. But I'll see what can be done. Fat Fable, you know, for the sake of that dinner, I really don't want anything to happen to you. Sorgen Sie für Transport, Klasse 4. The sergeant will take care of you. Oh, thank you very much, Major von Bergen. Thank you. I'll never forget this. I didn't want to humiliate you. What just happened was... <sighs> I was desperate they would have killed you. Perhaps that would have been better. I could not get any gasoline, but I got something almost as good. in a very bad way. What are you doing? I think it's time for the Colonel and I to part while we are still friends. But how are you gonna get to Andai? Walk. When your feet hurt, it is sometimes easier to forget the pain in your heart. Mademoiselle won't like it. That you go. I hope you're right. Just a little. She was a good friend, huh? Yes. This Yakubovsky. Nothing bad will happen to him. Bet he gets out of the country before we do. He will get across the border easy. With some tricks. You know what's going to happen at the border? The Germans will give him passage money to England. <laughs> no need to worry about Yakubovsky. Sing that tune.
Can we give you a lift? Oh, that's very kind of you, but won't you be terribly crowded? We're crowded already. It couldn't be worse. Do get in. Thank you. I have given my legs a new lease on life. I don't know how to thank you, dear lady. to lose my son. God bless you. Supermen should change their minds where it's in Joseph's convent up the hill. My passenger. I'm sorry to see you here. I myself am not exactly overjoyed. Courage. You. Your name is Jakubowski? Yes. And a man in both these photographs is Colonel Prokozny, hmm? I know Monsieur Prokozny, but I did not know he was a colonel. Where is Colonel Prokozny? I don't know. Why did you separate? He took the automobile and went off with it. With no arrangements to meet again? No. No, no arrangements. None. But you know where they were going, don't you? I think, I believe they wanted to go to Spain. I believe. Not to England? England? No. Never heard of that. You don't know from 
What point on this coast the colonel is planning to sail to England? No, I'm sorry, no. I never heard of such a plan. My friend here is a skilled technician. He has a faculty for getting from people who start out totally ignorant a surprising amount of information. With me, he would fail. Not because I doubt his skill. It's merely that I... I don't know. These poles can't possibly get away. Our intelligence knows there is a British ship waiting for them. I assure you, you will do yourself a great service if you tell us the place of the rendezvous. Look, gentlemen, they deserted me. They took my automobile, which I paid for, and left me on the road to Andai. Why should I protect them? Why should I protect them? If I knew anything, I would be very happy to tell you, but how can I tell you if I don't know? You will have to... Eight o'clock to solve that problem. If you haven't, by that time, I shall turn you over to my colleague here. He will discover what even you don't know. You may go now. May I have my passport? I'll keep it. Report back at eight o'clock. <laughs> Berlin wants immediate action. The escape route by which these Allied officers are being smuggled out to England must be discovered and destroyed. Do you think this Jakubowski knows anything? We shall soon find out. One thing is certain. The Colonel is not in Handai. I have been keeping a sharp look out for the Rolls Royce. But if this Jakubowski knows where he is, or knows the rendezvous point, he will go running there like a frightened rabbit. And we shall be right on his heels. Where can I find there, Michel? Second quarry on the left. Michel? I'm Colonel. Yes, I know. You travel part of the way with a certain S.L. Yakubovsky. Is that correct? Correct. How much does he know? He knows I have secret papers. He knows I meet submarine. Why? Monsieur Yakubovsky has been arrested by the Germans. Oh, no. He had an interview with the Gestapo. Nevertheless, at this moment, he is sipping coffee in the public square at on by a free man. Draw your own conclusions. I don't believe it. I don't believe Monsieur Jakubowski would give us away. Our rendezvous is at Point Saint Anne at five tomorrow morning. Our liaison officer will meet you there and convey you to the submarine. The Germans will no doubt intensify their efforts to intercept us, so we must be doubly careful. Our entire operation of rescuing Allied personnel is in danger. I know Monsieur Jakubowski didn't tell them anything. I know it. What do you expect? In his place, I do the same like he. Silence, Corporal! I feel he's in danger. 
our friend Yakubovsky. Our plan has failed. He's not going to lead us anywhere. Give him another five minutes. Waiter, I have a glass of water, please. Excuse me. Yes? Excuse me for disturbing you. I was watching. I know you are in trouble. In these times, many people are. There is an old saying. No matter how hopeless things look, there are always two possibilities. That's what I always thought until now. Thank you. I have a friend who has a different view entirely. He says, for a man of honor, there is all, only one possibility. What is it? That's what I'm about to find out. Good night, monsieur. Good night, monsieur. Let's pick him up. This is better luck than I expected. Yakubovsky didn't go to the Colonel, but the Colonel has come to Yakubovsky. Colonel. Dear Colonel, you are insane. What is that slop you drink? Waiter! Two brandies. I should have come sooner, but without you, we had the usual gasoline problem. You are my comrade in arms. You think I desert you? Colonel, it's sheer lunacy for you to come here. Don't you realize I'm being watched? You think I don't know this? In civilian things, Samuel, you are clever. But in military things, I'm more clever. They say you sit in a square, peaceful. I know better. I come. Colonel, please, Colonel, go while there's still a chance. What happens to me does not matter. But you have a mission. The papers are safe with Suzanne. I tell her, if I don't come back by 5 o'clock in the morning, she's to go in submarine to England without me. I sniff battle. I am alive again. <laughs> I'm afraid not for long. Any moment now they may arrest us. I don't think so. To capture us, they'll find very expensive. Yes, Colonel. But they can afford it. You've walked right into a trap. Waiter! Brandy! Double! Don't you see that they are only waiting for us? To lead them to the submarine? That's their strategy. But every good soldier has a counter strategy. <laughs> what a merry chase it will be, Samuel. Yes, very merry. What, what is our strategy? We lead them by the nose. When they think they've got us, then they find that they haven't got us. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Very handsome. Hmm. How will we do it? How? That's... Tactic, I leave to my staff officer. 
Samuel, I hereby appoint you as my staff officer. Thanks for the promotion. Oh, you've earned it. It requires only one little trick. Huh? This you're good at. Think of one little trick. You're thinking? I'm paralyzed. That's not like you, Samuel. Two heads are always better than one, especially when one of them is Jakubowski's. Between the two of us, we are a hero. It's six minutes past eight, and I'm still alive. Funny. You're thinking. That's fine. Keep it up. If I'm alive at seven minutes past eight, maybe I will live till 8.30. Who knows, even nine. Perhaps even 9.30. You are right. You thought of a tactic? I don't know if it's a tactic, but it could be a possibility. Only one? Half of one. Follow them. are still behind us. There it is. getting further and further away from the sea. How dare you stop me like this? You are not going to steal this automobile as well. It was a gift to the convent, and I defy you to take it away from me. Do you hear? It's almost five, mademoiselle. If we are not out at sea when the submarine surfaces, they will not wait. They will have to submerge right away. Please, just a few more minutes. A few minutes, please, perhaps. Look. My tumors 
Musketeers, you are alive! Colonel, I must speak to you. Excuse me. Since you saw Pierre Michel yesterday afternoon, two more Allied officers have shown up. They have top priority. So, there is only room for two of you in my boat. What do you mean, only two? I repeat, Colonel. I can take you and your fiancée, but that's all. Goodbye, Suzanne. I wish you both great happiness. Goodbye, Monsieur Samuel. I'll be with you. Goodbye, Tadius. Goodbye? Take Monsieur Jakubowski. The world needs you both. It can use you both. I stay here and fight in my own way. Why did you decide this? Because you love Monsieur Jakubowski? Because I love you both, and because I love my country. This I cannot accept. I cannot accept this. If you do not go, I cannot go. Oh, you think I leave you here alone? With Suzanne? Listen to me, please. What will you accomplish by staying here and getting killed? I am in no danger, and I can do a lot more good here than in England. Soon you will come back to free my country, and I will be here to welcome you. Please, Colonel, we must hurry. It's getting late. Savoyevich? I promote you to sergeant. Thank you, sir. Take good care of Mademoiselle Suzanne. Yes, sir. And I will take good care of him. <laughs> This. Thank you. In the synagogue of my heart, a candle will always burn for you. I will come back for you. I'll wait for you. for Moses to open up the channel for me. You are Moses. Actually, my name is Basil. We are about to submerge, gentlemen. Do you mind coming below? Wait! Wait! The papers! My mission! In my confusion, I left them. Oh, I must die. I must die. That would be premature. More and more, I like this Yakubovsky. <laughs> <laughs> 